Hi everyone! So today I'm going to do a sort of review of the Waitsmith Centennial Edition of the Rider Waite deck. So rather than just reviewing this deck in and of itself, I decided that I would make a comparison video with the original Rider Waite. Um, these two decks basically are the Rider Waite decks that you want to go to if you don't like the kind of bright colouring of your sort of standard Rider Waite deck, the kind of US Games edition with the kind of uh, checkered, blue checkered backs. Some people love that, some people like the Radiant uh, Rider Waite, but personally I kind of detest those decks and um, the colours just do absolutely nothing for me and to me they just sort of emphasise the kind of cartoonish character of the Rider Waite Smith, which is something that initially really put me off the deck as a whole. Um, so then when I kind of got to know Tarot a bit better and, and I realised just how important it was for me to to have a Rider Waite deck for learning purposes. Um, I then kind of started looking up the different editions that were available and I, dis I discovered uh, the original Rider Waite. I think this edition wasn't actually available at that time or I certainly would have chosen it over the original um, Rider Waite tarot deck. So the original Rider Waite tarot deck is, its name is a little bit misleading because there's nothing particularly original about it. It was supposedly based, um, the images were supposed to be kind of based more on older editions of the deck, I believe. And actually, I haven't really done enough research into this to find out whether or not this is true. But as far as I can tell, um, it, you know, it probably, it probably isn't. Um, I'm not sure that any of the little changes that I'm going to talk about um, in the deck, there are a couple of very minor kind of alterations in, um, particularly in facial expressions of a couple of the characters on the cards, and in terms of the colouring and things like that. I don't think there's anything particularly authentic about this deck. Um, what it is, is that the colouring is very muted. It's a lot more brown and kind of sepia toned than your kind of standard US games deck. And I think this is maybe moving more towards what much older decks might have looked like, that they probably weren't as vibrant or as, you know, as I see it, as lurid. Um, but I just found that the colouring was extremely different to the original because what I ended up doing was I primarily used the Rider Waite for clients. Um, so for various reasons, I decided to pick up this um, Centennial edition because I was becoming less and less um, less and less satisfied with the original Rider Waite tarot deck. I was noticing particularly that um, the the range of colour is actually um, not so good in this deck and also that the, the black lines are kind of are very very heavy, very thick and that actually means that the de a lot of detail actually gets lost. But that's something I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the video. So if, like me, you don't appreciate the vibrant or lurid colours of these standard kind of Rider Waite deck or, you know, things like um, the Radiant Rider Waite. If, like me, that just isn't your bag, you've probably been looking into uh, these decks um, as your go-to Rider Waite tarot deck. So um, I think doing a little comparison video might be helpful for you. Um, I decided what I would do is that I'm going to just, I've picked out a certain number of cards and I'm going to just compare each of those cards and talk a little bit about the differences that I've noticed between these two decks. So both decks have a sort of yellowed, slightly sepia kind of toned look to them. They're, they both have been the colours have been altered in both in such a way as to make them look kind of old and possibly tea stained. Um, and, but the way that this has been done is, is very, very different and I think it's been done um, much, much better in this deck as opposed to this deck. And I just realised that I was actually showing you the back of that box rather than the front. So first of all, I'll show you the card backs. Um, quite different as you can see and straight away you can really see the attention to detail um, that is present in the Centennial edition and that really kind of isn't in the original right of weight just that the the image is just a lot more kind of grainy and distorted um, and the color is a lot you know kind of brighter and um, cardstock by the way is definitely far superior in the centennial edition it's thicker and we also have um the borders are actually kind of slightly yellowed on the centennial centennial edition they're actually white in the original Rider Waite. So this is something that I find a little bit jarring with the original Rider Waite, is that despite the fact that the, the cards are even more kind of yellowed 
and browner and darker than the Centennial Edition. Um, the whites are stark white um, and so this kind of makes a very stark contrasted kind of, kind of image. Now this might be your bag, it might not. Um, so I just thought I'd start off comparing um, The Fool because, you know, just it being the first card in the deck, it's a very important card um, in the deck and I thought it was a good, good place to start and it actually demonstrates a couple of the main colour differences between these two decks. So um, throughout, I would say that the Centennial Edition, the colours aren't as different from your kind of standard Rider Waite deck. Um, I, and I've got that image up in front of me on my tablet. Um, the, the primary difference I find is in the blues. Um, the yellows and greens and reds tend to be pretty much the same. The blues are a little more kind of green toned in the Centennial Edition. And I find that the blues also have a sort of texture to them. They look sort of like watercolour. They're not a kind of uniform block colour. And that'll be more evident in a few other of the cards that I've chosen that have a sort of blue background. So the Fool, as you can see, is pretty similar to your kind of standard Rider Waite deck. But um, in the original Rider Waite, you can see that the colours are a lot darker. Um, the yellow is actually a kind of orange shade, and that is pretty much... That is the case pretty much throughout, that all of the yellows are darker, they're more orange, and the oranges are more red. The skin tone is kind of this weird reddy kind of colour that I really don't enjoy that much. Um, there's a lot of red through this image. Red kind of dominates um, a lot in these cards, and also that the blue is not blue at all. Um, blues in the original Rider Waite are all a sort of teal, green, murky brown kind of colour. It is a really beautiful colour, but... Um, and I will talk about this again, you know, as I go through the deck, that can be, that can be uh, kind of problematic because sometimes you just want your blues to be blue. So straight off with these two cards, I think you can probably already see the difference in detail. Um, you can see that the, the black tends to be a lot thicker and denser in the original Rider Waite and the Centennial Edition. There's a lot more kind of fine detail. Um, the facial expressions on both are actually quite different. The face seems to have been slightly reworked on the or original Rider Waite. As far as I've seen so far, the faces and facial expressions in the Centennial Edition are um, a lot more similar to the standard Rider, Rider, Rider Waite deck. The difference seems to have been made in the original Rider Waite. And as a rule, um, I'm not fond of it. And it just strikes me as a bit odd that they are actually so, so different. So I've picked out cards to look at deliberately that have um, a, a range of main background colours just so that you get a feel for uh, the range in colours, the colour differences between the different decks. Um, so as you can see the Centennial Edition, this kind of dark slate blue in the kind of standard Rider weight is definitely a little greener in the Centennial Edition. It has Again, like I say, particularly the blues, they have this kind of grainier quality. You might like this, you might loathe it. Personally, I really like it. It looks to me more like the original kind of painting that has that kind of watercolour look to it. Um, apart from that, this card is um, is pretty similar to the kind of standard um, standard Rider weight. apart from the fact that, again, uh, the whites aren't white. And again, that's something that you might like, you might dislike. Personally, I like it, um, but you might prefer in the original Rider weight the fact that the whites are actually white. So, you know, his beard and the mountains are actually white. But as you can see, the colour of the background in the original Rider weight is pretty drastically different in, um, to the kind of standard deck. It's really got very little blue going on there at all. It's pretty much a kind of murky greenish uh, brown. In the moon we can see some pretty similar differences, um, but here the colour is lighter. And that's the same in the standard Rider weight, that the blue background is a lot brighter and more vibrant. Um, but the, the tone of this blue is a lot more true to form. Um, I think it looks a lot more like the original blue, just overlaid with a sort of yellow stain, rather than the original Rider Waite, um, which definitely has a very greeny kind of tone to it. There are no actual blues in the original Rider Waite whatsoever, they're all pretty much green. And here I think again you can see just the, the fine detail in the Centennial Edition. 
um, is a lot more evident and um, it's a lot kind of brighter that the blacks just kind of merge a lot less into the figures. I've also noticed that um, the titles aren't centred on the Centennial Edition and I would suspect that that is based maybe on some very early edition of it. Maybe it was the, you know, one of the first kind of printings of the deck. Perhaps they were less, um, less kind of centrally placed. But we do have the original lettering um, from pa Pamela Coleman Smith rather than the, um, the kind of typeface that was used in the US Games standard Rider Waite. The Tower is one of the few cards that is actually darker in the Centennial Edition um, and this card is a lot more true to form to the standard Rider Waite. Um, you can kind of see that the shadowing and the clouds here, um, that is present in the kind of standard images and it kind of disappears in the original Rider Waite and I'm not exactly sure why that choice was made. It's strange that this card is less dark as opposed to more dark like the rest of the original Rider Waite. It, it feels to me with the original Rider Waite like somebody has just gone through and just up the contrast in all of the images and um, that's not necessarily always um, a good thing. You start to see in this card as well that there's some of some colour details that are missing in the original Rider Waite such as the kind of these blue streaks at the base of the tower and they're not as obvious in the standard Rider Waite but they are there and um, so I just like that that through a lot of these cards we do actually see some extra colours that are missing in the original Rider Waite. The Three of Wands in the Centennial Edition is really quite similar as far as I can see to the standard Rider Waite. Um, I'm personally not seeing any major differences but you know I don't have the actual deck in front of me so I'm not entirely sure. And again we just have a, a much more golden kind of orangey red kind of colour uh, to the original Rider Waite. So here's another example of that slightly dark blue sky with the mottled effect that I was talking about and this is fairly similar to the colouring in the Hermit and again we see that the blue here is you know fairly similar to the standard deck much greener in the original Rider weight and um, there's detail of kind of colour shading in the background. We have this green landmass in the background which has become orange in the original Rider Waite and that's something, one of the main things that I dislike about the original Rider Waite. Not only that there are no blues but there are actually very few proper greens. Um, for all that we have all of those kind of teal kind of green colours for the sky, the, the green colours in kind of details of land, land mass and leaves and stuff like that often get lost which I really um, dislike. So we just have more detail of a sort of gradient of colour here with the greeny bluey kind of background. One of the differences I like the most between um, the kind of standard Rider Waite deck and the Centennial Edition, apart from those horrible blues and yellows, which I just detest, <laughs> they're very, very bright, is the fact that those kind of uh, very dull greys have been transformed into a more kind of mottled, kind of brownish kind of taupe kind of colour, which I really, really like. Um, and again, of course, we see in the original Rider Waite that this has become a lot more orange. The face is quite red um, and it just has, again, you know, that very contrasted orange kind of colour to it. And we see again that pretty much that same kind of, kind of colour contrast here. Um, here it's just a slightly lighter kind of brown. Um, fairly similar to the standard Rider Waite again here in the Centennial, just a little browner rather than grey, a little bit more mottled, but um, as you can see, you know, a lot more muted than the stark kind of orangey reds of the original Rider Waite. The Six of Swords is one of the few cards that I actually prefer the original Rider Waite uh, to the Centennial Edition because I find that the blue here is actually just a little bit too deep a blue. Um, I'm, I'm very fond of the, the Six of Swords as a card and I've always been very fond of this image um, and I just I'm not so fond about the, the deeper blue. This is a lot darker than the blues in the kind of standard Rider Waite. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm not so fond of is when these kind of darker mottled blues appear in cards where originally or in the more standard deck it's a lot lighter kind of a background and it's not kind of I feel like it's popping out a little bit too much that the foreground is merging too much into that background and I also really like the sort of mottled sky going on here that doesn't appear too much in the original right away but I just I really like the atmosphere of this one but as you can see there's a lot of bright red going on which is just um you know very warm 
The yellows as a rule are fairly similar, which you saw um, with the Fool, perhaps in the Chariot and other cards like that, even more so. Um, there's not a whole lot of difference here, but just I feel again with the detail of colours, um, little bits of detail of the blue around his kind of arm cuffs here, and you know that the black lines are finer, this is a lot more detail kind of apparent. We do see a difference in facial expression here um, and that's something that I'm going to go into in more depth with other cards because it's a lot more evident and I might kind of zoom in on those cards to really give you a feel for just how different um, those facial expressions are because I think that's quite a big deal. Um, this facial expression is essentially the same as the images that I have from Wikipedia, which I'm assuming are the kind of standard US Games Rider Waite images. And in the original Rider Waite, he's been made to look a lot more ferocious and angry. So that's been very interesting for me, working with a deck that actually has a much more, pl not placid, but a lot more calm, a much calmer face, a lot less stern. But yes, with some of the cards it doesn't make a whole lot of difference and here we just have a pretty perfect example of a um, very similar kind of colouring. The Centennial Edition is quite similar to, <clears throat> to the standard. The original Rider weight is quite similar apart from that kind of teal, kind of greeny blue rather than the standard kind of blue colour. Here again you can see that there's just finer detail in the face here, there's all sorts of weirdness going on with his nose in the Page of Cups um, and again we have that kind of weird brown mottled background which I do quite like. And again we have this sort of light beige-ish colour rather than the grey in the usual deck. As you can see that's another card that is really quite similar, there are no major differences. Um, there are definitely fewer differences between the cards with you know, a lot of black and yellow and red. So I mentioned that one of my major difficulties with the original Rider Waite is that the black lining is just so heavy and almost kind of fuzzy that you lose an awful lot of detail. It's really kind of, really quite cack-handedly done, I feel. Um, and again, as I said, with the green just not really being apparent in the original Rider Waite, um, that's quite irritating too. You kind of glance at this and you almost can't really tell what's going on down here in the bottom at all. Whereas with the Centennial Edition we have that green really popping and you can see the detail of the flowers here in the bottom of the card. Um, there's definitely a lot of detail that goes kind of, that kind of gets lost in the original Rider Waite in this card, particularly with the Magician's facial expression. Um, I feel here that we can kind of see his expression of confidence um, and a, a strong kind of will. Um, whereas here, you know, his face is, it's almost, you just can't really see what's going on there at all. A very similar card here with the Queen of Pentacles and we have the exact uh, same kind of issue that a lot of the greens have become red in the original Rider Waite for some reason. Um, you know, there's a little hair or rabbit down here in the corner that you pretty much lose completely in the original Rider Waite and you know, why is the grass red? <laughs> you know, I, it's just um, that kind of red colouring uh, really bothers me where he's got a lot, a lot more depth of tone and um, variance of colour in the Centennial Edition. There really is a richer, lusher quality to this card, whereas I've always disliked all of the court cards, the Pentacles court cards, in the original Rider Waite. The King of Pentacles is actually the card that made me start looking for an alternative to my original Rider Waite. You can probably see here that um, just pretty much all of the surroundings of this card, of the, the original Rider Waite uh, King of Pentacles, it's really just a chaos of colours and um, you really can't even tell very easily where his clothing ends, where the background begins. Um, it, it took a while for me to even notice that the pattern on his kind of gown is actually grapes and vines uh, and there's no green um, in sight, which you know for a King of Pentacles card is a pretty massive oversight. Um, whereas in, the, in this card, in the Centennial Edition, you can actually really make out the detail of his clothing and um, the background it just stands out a lot more from the foreground primarily because we do actually have this green on the vines um, kind of surrounding him. There's just so much more detail that appears um, on this card and while it is still a very busy card there's a lot going on with it you can actually pick out the details and see you know the the bull head here and stuff like that you can actually see it and um, whereas I feel like pretty much all of that detail gets lost in this card and I, I always really disliked um, this card in this deck.
We have the exact same issue here with the Ten of Pentacles. Um, this may even perhaps be worse because for some reason in the original Rider weight, the image has actually been cropped. You can see that the child is kind of cut off uh, just before the edge and um, yeah, the image is actually just slightly, uh, yeah, slightly cropped. Whereas there's a little bit more space around the edges of this image. Um, you can see just that the detail of the, the symbolism and the designs in the cloak are actually apparent uh, in the Centennial Edition and a lot of that gets lost in this. And the Death card, of course, is another prime example, this being one of the busiest cards, again, in the deck. All of that detail of the figures down at the bottom of the card is pretty much not completely lost, but you really have to know what you're looking for, I think, to really figure out what's going on in the original Rider weight. And, you know, again, we have the contrast of, we have we do have the whites in this card. Uh, here, it's it's a lot more kind of subdued. Um, but I really like the very fine kind of black lines in this card and the way that it's the color has been extended, the black has been reduced, so that we kind of can actually get an idea of what's going on. I also like the detail of the red eye on the horse, which is lost in the original Rider weight. The Strength card is another interesting example of things just getting lost with the bad colouring because you know when you kind of glance at it it looks pretty similar apart from the stark white being missing and the line being more red but actually with closer inspection you can see that the green in the wreath around the lion's neck has been left out in the original rider weight. I was actually not aware that the wreath was supposed to be around the lion's neck until I read it in a tarot book and you know I went and looked at my deck and it, it's just basically been completely obliterated. Um, that green is present in the standard Rider Waite deck and again it is present here in the, in the Centennial Edition. You can just about make out the green here around his neck. Um, that strikes me as a very strange um, change made in the original Rider Waite. I don't know if it was deliberate or if it was just um, kind of a mistake that was made with the printing. Um, I'm not entirely sure but that's a pretty that's a pretty massive symbolic change because Obviously there's huge symbolism with the two, with the, the woman and the lion being connected like that. that. Um, there is the symbol of the infinity sign that it kind of goes around her waist and then goes around his neck and it actually ties them together. And you know, it's a very, very strange choice if it, indeed it was a choice and a very bad mistake if it wasn't. And again, just the, the carelessness of her hand here is just completely red. Um, I would suspect that that was just pure carelessness on the part of the people who put together the original Rider Waite uh, deck. And that is one of my major bugbears along with the King of Pentacles. And finally, in that kind of group of cards that lose detail because of the thick black lines just as is a perfect example of a card that I really don't like that much in the original Rider Waite. It's very kind of busy, her face is kind of obscured, um, whereas in the Centennial Edition the, the black lines have been made really fine and her facial expressions Actually, I think that the, the face is a lot more androgynous in the Centennial Edition, which is interesting. She looks you know, a lot less definitely female. Something about that strong nose. And then we have the cards that have basically altered facial expressions. And again, I'm not entirely sure if this was a deliberate choice on the part of the designers of this deck or if it was just a sort of accident with um, just carelessness or the, the way that the black lines were, repro <coughs> were reproduced in these images. Um, I think that possibly this deck you know, it's possible this deck was just based on a different printing of the Rider weight. So, you know, whether or not you think that the uh, the facial expression in the Centennial Edition and the standard Rider weight deck, whether or not you think that is the authentic version, you know, I don't know. You'd probably have to just find copies of the original uh, paintings done by Pamela Coleman Smith to verify that. Verify that, and I'm not sure where you. It, you know, I don't, I'm not sure that that can be found. But there's quite a profound difference in the facial expressions here. Um, in the sort of standard image, the the man looks quite despondent. Um, he has a kind of downward turn to his mouth. He looks quite kind of sad. Um, definitely more of a negative facial expression. 
captain, where in the, in the original Rider Waite he looks quite neutral. He looks almost happy, he looks as though he's proud of his work. Um, funnily enough, I do find as well that interpretations of, of this, this card vary quite a lot from one to the other. But I tend to find that it swings both ways and I will generally read upright as being a more sort of examining the fruits of your labour um, where, or being patient, whereas, you know, the inverted image, the reverse card, will be more about maybe being impatient, being unhappy about the fruits of your labour, or the fruits of your labour just, you know, not quite, um, not quite being up to your expectations. Um, but that's an interesting uh, difference, and that's definitely worth noting. The Queen of Swords is another card where this kind of change in facial expression is quite marked. Um, the facial expression in the original Rider Waite is actually quite blurred, but she very definitely looks sad. Um, there's almost like her eyebrows is almost kind of slanted the opposite direction as though um, she's kind of has her eyebrows slightly raised. Um, she definitely still has a downturn to her mouth, but it just doesn't look as set. She really just looks a bit forlorn and a bit sad as though she's grieving perhaps. Um, whereas in this image, she looks very definitely almost grim. Um, she definitely looks like she has a set jaw. She looks a lot more fierce. Personally, I prefer this image. This is a lot more in line with what I understand about the Queen of Swords. I have, of course, come across interpretations of the Queen of Swords as being about a woman who is grieving, a widow. Um, and I'm not sure if that interpretation is sort of pre-Golden Dawn, pre Waite. Um, I have a feeling that Waite's interpretation of this card leans more towards um, the kind of fierce kind of woman rather than a grieving woman or a woman who is in pain. Of course, both interpretations are relevant to this card and it, it all depends on the context. Um, but I think that's an interesting thing to note as well. Um, there are minor differences with other facial expressions too, um, although I'd say those two are the most marked. Um, for example, here with the Five of Pentacles, mostly you just can't really see the facial expressions in the original Rider Waite. the same problem with the thick black lines. Um, but here, um, I feel like this figure here, you know, he, just, he actually looks a little bit less perturbed by the whole thing. This one looks a little bit more... Um, more perturbed, more upset maybe. Um, but as you can see, you can kind of definitely see those faces a lot more clearly in, in, the, uh, in the Five of Pentacles in the Centennial Edition. Overall, it's pretty undeniable that I much, much prefer the Smithwaite Centennial Edition. Um, it just has so much going for it that the, the original Rider Waite tarot deck doesn't. Um, I think that if you're looking for something that isn't as vivid and lurid and bright, doesn't have those kind of ludicrously bright, bright colours. Um, you know, you might find some vintage editions of the standard kind of Rider Waite deck that might be a bit more authentic and true to, true to what was actually originally printed and originally painted by Pamela Coleman Smith. But I think that this edition is probably getting pretty close to um, what the deck would have originally looked like, but with that kind of tea-stained, yellowed, aged kind of look to it. The original Rider Waite was a wonderful option while it was the only option available, if you know what I mean, and um, because for a long time it was the only other option that had um, markedly different kind of colours, uh, colour tone to it. Um, but I think it's been not very well executed, um, as I've demonstrated with the card comparison. As I've said, the card the cardstock is fantastic. Um, I'm surprised by how the, the deck as a whole, um, the, the stack of cards as a whole, it's not too unwieldy. But overall, I really can't praise this deck enough. It's a beautiful tarot deck. It's a beautiful rendition of the Rider Waite. Um, they are probably the most beautifully coloured images I have ever seen of um, the Rider Waite Smith images. You know, even the kind of vintage decks images that I've seen of them, some of the more muted colours, um, I haven't, you know, liked those that colouring quite as much as I as I do this. I really like more warm toned versions of the blues and everything like that. It, it really is a really lovely effect. So even if you actually have the original Rider Waite tarot deck, um, this one might be worth a look if you're not completely happy with it, if you're not satisfied with it. I would probably, um, I would definitely suggest this over the standard one. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with this deck. I'm pleased to see that a better quality of Rider Waite Smith deck is in production now because you do hear a lot of people complaining about the cardstock and the quality of the images in the Rider Waite Smith decks these days. And I feel like US Games has sort of um, turned a corner maybe and um, perhaps are catering to people who do want um, a better quality of deck who um, are not you know, not wanting to just purchase a cheap and flimsy version of the deck with, um, you know, really stark uh, kind of garish colours, um, but that they want to pick up something a little bit classier um, with a little bit more kind of weight and depth to it. So I'll leave it there. I hope that this was helpful. If I've left anything out in the comparison of these decks or about this deck in general, um, please do let me know. I'll answer any questions that you have in the comments below.